the Easter Gospel on this day from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Jesus, Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go, go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him, told them, that he had said these things to her. The Easter gospel of our Lord. He is risen. He lives. He is with us always. Powerful truths on this day. Powerful truths that on this wonderful morning of Easter celebration hold the hope and the promise of all generations. Truths that on that first Good Friday could not be heard amidst the lashing of the whip, the pounding of the nails, in the piercing of the lance. Truths that on that first Easter eventually became the very foundation of our faith and on this day as well. But before they knew it was Easter, well, it was still night. It was a time of hopelessness, a time of grieving. No doubt the disciples and the friends of Jesus spent a sleepless night. The main concern, besides their grief, was wondering if they would be next, wondering when the Romans would come for them, wondering if they would experience the same fate that their beloved Jesus had. And for those who maybe caught a few winks of sleep, imagine that night. It was a night of nightmares, visions of Christ being crucified and betrayed. And how about those who were friends of Jesus that had abandoned him, that had denied him. Think of that night of guilt and struggle. And those who were there that stuck with him to the end, they had anger at those who had abandoned Jesus. A night of terrible, conflicting, confusing, hopeless emotions. But we have been there, haven't we? We've been there after the death of a loved one. We've been there after the death of a dream. We have been there in the dark night of hopelessness, wondering what's next, wondering if morning will ever come. And our friends try to comfort us and say, the sun will rise tomorrow, but we don't believe them. But then the sun does rise, and we try to step out of our hiding places, our places of grieving, 
and try to recreate our lives, which in many ways have been destroyed or certainly been, been rearranged. Mary was doing the very same thing. She rose early in the morning and she had to do something. We have to do something. That's part of our healing. So as part of her healing, she goes for a walk before the sun rises and she walks to the cemetery, the place where Jesus is buried. She expects, I think, to go there simply to pay respects, but what she finds is a horrifying thing. Now they've taken the body of Jesus. The tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. She panics and she runs to where the disciples are hiding out. And she said, they have taken the Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. And Peter and John begin probably one of the most famous sprints in history as they run to the tomb. And we get there and John, who has been called the beloved friend of Jesus, who was there till the end, he, he peeks in, he peeks in, he sees the empty tomb. Je Peter, Peter, the impulsive one, runs in and he finds the tomb empty as well, but he finds the linen clothes, but also the linen that had been wrapped around Jesus' head, he finds wrapped up. A curious evidence of this morning that, that maybe they didn't take Jesus, maybe something more happened, a, a faint hope was in that tomb on that morning and John we are told looks in doesn't go in but he believes so the morning that dawned a morning of hopelessness begins with a ray of hope and then it becomes pregnant with hope as we see what happens next the men, as men often do, just ran on their own. They left Mary right there, but she stays, and she is weeping. She is grieving Jesus. And as she peeks in, she sees two angels, one at the foot, one at the head where Jesus had laid, and they are in white angels speaking. And they say to her, why are you weeping? And she said, they've taken the Lord. If you know where, let me know so I can go and find him. And then she hears a voice behind her. She mistakes it for the gardener. The voice is saying, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? And she turns and says, they have taken the Lord, and I don't know where he is. She does not recognize Jesus at this point, but we've been there too. Grief has overcome us we are blinded by our tears we don't see the future in front of us we see only dead ends and at this point it is it is still hopeless and she must turn away because the gospel tells us that what happens next is amazing it changes the course of history we are here celebrating these truths because of what happened Jesus speaks her name Jesus says, Mary. And when he speaks her name, it burns through the grief, burns through the hopelessness. And in an instant, she must have known, one can almost sense the smile, sense the look in her eyes. And she says to him, Rabunai, which Hebrew means teacher. It was all about the relationship. Jesus and Mary were on a first-name basis, and Jesus and you and me are in a first-name basis. We were introduced to him at our baptism when we were sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, forgiven, baptized into his death, certainly, but along with that death, baptized into his resurrection. He is risen and because he is risen, we too can rise from the endless nights of grief that we have from time to time in our lives and rise to new hope and new possibilities to take that first step and to move forward knowing that Jesus knows us and Jesus will be there with us. He is alive, and because he is alive and conquered death, we can walk into cemeteries and walk away from cemeteries knowing that that is not the end for Christians. 
Pastor Aaron ends all of our funerals with a wonderful benediction when he says it is not goodbye, but it is see you later. That's what it means to be a Christian. It is never goodbye. It's always see you later on the other side. And he is with us always, just as he promised. He said he would come back, and he did time and time again. But first, he came to Mary, and he said her name, Mary. So whenever you face struggles in your lives, whenever you face your doubts, whenever you face the glories and wonders of your life, know that Jesus is right there. Experience it with you, saying your very name. He is risen. He lives. He is with us always. And when we are baptized into Christ Jesus, whether we know it or not, we are introduced into a personal relationship with Jesus, a first name basis. And I so love that I am not in this world alone. I have people who love me, but they cannot always be there. And some of them will die. And some of them will die. And they will not come back to us in this earth. But because Jesus promised, promised us, he prepares a place for us and them. And one day, one day we will be safe in that place. One day our loved ones will be safe in that place. And though I can't explain how it will happen, I trust and I live beyond hope that it will be so. So I invite you on this day to continue this personal relationship with Jesus. As he speaks your name, speak it back. I invite you to turn to your heartbeat where it says Jesus prayer. And together we will pray this prayer in song. And we will be reminded that Jesus comes to us and he speaks our name and he invites us into a lifelong, eternal relationship. Let us pray. Jesus, let us come to know you. Let us see you face to face. Touch us, hold us, use us, mold us. Only let us live in you. Jesus, draw us ever near you. Hold us in your loving arms. Wrap us in your gentle presence. When the end comes, bring us home. Whatever it is that's holding you back, rise to the new possibilities in your life. If you have lost loved ones, know that because Christ died, you will see them again. And know that you are never alone. Jesus is with you, speaking your name at all times through the laughter and the tears, but particularly in those moments when those of us stand or have stood by the grave of a loved one, with seemingly all hope and all promise sliding into that cold, frozen clay. He speaks to us as he, speak, as he spoke to Mary. I am with you. This is not the end. Because he is risen. He lives. He is with us always. A blessed Easter, a hopeful Easter.